Hello, my name is Joe Diaper. Yes, I have had a haircut, and welcome to A Court of Ale. As always, in this episode, I'm going to rate a drink out of 10 in seven different categories that I feel are very important for any alcoholic beverage. And those categories are the can or bottle appearance, the drinks in glass appearance, how the drink smells, the all-important first sip, its effort to drink, its gassiness, and the after-drink feeling. So there we have it. Now, it's 25 degrees outside, I'm in a room with all the windows closed, I'm sweating my balls off, and I'm gasping for a drink. So let's find out what we're drinking today. Today's drink is the fantastically named Dennis Hopper. What a brilliant name. According to their website, it's their flagship IPA, which boasts a classic West Coast bitterness. Pale malt provides the base, Carapils added for body, and Columbus hops for bittering. Citra, Vic Secret, which I was pretty sure was a naughty old Dre shop, and Yukunat are in the Whirlpool. Its ABV is 5.3%, and I'm drinking it in a 330 milliliter bottle, but it is also available in the same size can. It has no declared IBU, which apparently stands for the International Bitterness Unit Scale, which gauges a beer's bitterness. It's brewed by Mondo Brewing Co. and is based in London, England. Cheers! Its listed ingredients are water, barley, hops and yeast. And that's all I could find out other than what's in the beer's description. Always remember a bottle opener if you're reviewing a bottle beer. So we're going to start with the bottle appearance then. Now, I have heard of this one before. Um, I've not tried it at all, but I have heard the name before because it is a brilliant pun. And they are definitely going to get a couple of extra points just for that. Because um, that's really, that's, that's going above and beyond. People need to make funny pun names for beers. I'm more for this. I really so let's have a look at the actual bottle then. Um, apart from the name, um, it's colourful, um, with a kind of flowery motif going on. Um, got your pinks, your reds, your greens. Uh, quite typical for IPA colours, really. Uh, the name itself isn't very clear at the top, it's quite small. Um, so its selling point, I think, is its name. And so the name should be a lot bigger um, and a lot more um, in the centre of the bottle there. Because uh, otherwise, if you're just browsing a fridge, you'd probably just overlook this one. Um, because it looks so many, like so many similar IPAs. It's a bit of a shame because I love the name. If they did more with the name and stuck it right in the middle there with nice big lettering, I think it'll jump out to a lot more people and people will try it just for that reason. Um, it could have gone all out as well with the theme of it, but they haven't. But at the same time, um, it's colourful. Uh, I don't know if whether it would grab my eye in a fridge, uh, but as I said, it would get a, a couple of bonus points for its name. So I'm going to give this one a six. Now then, for the beer's in-glass appearance. Very excited. As I said, it's really warm in here, and I'm gagging for a drink already. Am. So we're going to pop off there. Lovely. 
and we'll give it a pour into the glass. Lovely stuff. There it goes. This looks so welcoming. Lovely crisp sound to the pour, very nice. I don't know if you picked that up on camera. Let's look at the beer's in glass appearance then. righty oh. If we look at that there, a bit cloudy, um, but probably to be expected for an IPA. Uh, you can see through it, so it's not it's not massively cloudy at all. Um, and looks very appealing. Gassy at the bottom, um, which can be a good thing or bad thing. It does look overly gassy. Got a nice few bubbles rising, but it's not going crazy at all. And you end up with a little tiny head on top, uh, which looks like a good pour, to be perfectly honest. And it looks like a sweet amber nectar, and I just want to get this down. I really do. Desperate. So, in glass appearance, lovely stuff, looking good, looks great, maybe a little bit cloudy. Mm. Let's go for a, a solid eight. Now it's time for how the beer smells in the glass. So when I raise this to my mouth, am I going to be put off by any waft? Or is it going to smell a million dollars? I hope the latter, because I'm so excited to drink this beer. Here we go. Let's give it a whiff. <laughs> Whoa, that smells really good. I don't know if it's because I'm really, really hot. And at this moment in time, any IPA would do me well. But that's got a fantastically citrusy smell. You can smell oranges. You can smell lemons. It's not too harsh either. It's not hard at all when you do smell it. It's not overpowering. Um, and definitely that orangey lemon smell. Man, that smells very good. That smells really, really good. Oh, I just want to drink it, but I can't yet because there's other categories. Oh, so, the smell. Uh, I'm going to give, I, I think it smells beautiful. Um, if it tastes half as good as it smells, then this is going to be a good beer. I'm going to give it a massive 9 out of 10. Who'd have thought? Now is the moment I've been waiting for. It is time for the all-important first sip. You can see the big old smile on my face because I can't wait to drink this. I'm hope I've got really high hopes, um, and I'm hoping this is going to be amazing because it smells great. It looks great. It's got a funny name. How could it go wrong? Let's see. Right, first sip. Here we go. Cheers to you and your family. Oh, that is very nice. That is very enjoyable. That is very, very good. I'm, I'm pleased to know that it's not let me down. I really am. You do get that hit of um, orange and lemons and citrusy, fruity taste, uh, but it's not, thankfully, overpowering. Um, it hits the front of the tongue and it just makes your taste buds light up. It's wonderful. It's a great feeling, especially on a hot summer's day like today. You could, oh, you could very, I think you can drink these over and over again. Very nice, lovely stuff. Um, no taste in the back of your mouth or anything like that. It's not sticking with you. It's just a lovely sip um, that wants you to drink even more of it. Um, it's like, I, I'd say probably if you uh, met a girl Okay, I'm going to go down this road, don't worry, don't worry. If you met a girl and you went on a first date, oh, nothing happened, obviously, nothing happened. Uh, but she was charming, elegant, polite, and had a personality of a legend, and you just want to see her some more, and maybe have some fun times, this is the beer for you. Yes, indeed, I think that's the best analogy. A girl you want to see again. I'm going to give it, for first sip, a nine again! A nine! It's going well. It's going very well. The main event, the effort to drink. After that first sip, I am 
dying to have even more um, and to just get this down me. I could drink probably five or six of these, I'm thinking. Um, a little bit of a burp already, um, but it's my only beer of day, first beer. It's maybe a bit gassy, but we'll see after the um, effort of drink. So, I'll see you in a sec. Cheers. Really is lovely, really is a very light IPA. It doesn't feel alcoholic at all. Um, a 5.3%, uh, maybe it's on the higher end, possibly, uh, going into the higher end for an IPA, but it is delightful. It doesn't taste strong, it tastes like juice, almost. Um, especially with that citrus and lemon feeling to it. Get it down now. You can imagine yourself sitting on a beach, t-shirt off, I know, that sounds disgusting for me, sunglasses on, a few tunes, and a few of these bad boys. Oh yes. Maybe a bit of Will Smith in the background, just proper Miami vibes. I'm enjoying it, I don't think you can tell. Even though it is light, um, this isn't a beer you drink probably as quickly as I am. It's more of a sippy beer, definitely. It's one that you just have a sip off again and again and again. And it's a beer, a little bit gassy, and it's a beer that you don't want to end. That's why I'm a, I'm a bit slower. I don't want it to finish. I want more. And I don't have any more of this. People buy me some of this. Give you my address later. So a few more. Let's, let's finish it off. And I say unfortunately, but there we are. That's the name of the game. This is the one. This is the one. Absolutely beautiful. That was. I might have a tear, might be a little bit of a tear, now it's gone. I'm a bit sad. So effort to drink, again, that was lovely, a lovely tipple. I think you sip it a little bit slower than I'd have for this purpose, but I don't want to be here all day. But that's beautiful. I'm going to give that a nine as well. Well done. So for its gassiness then, um, as I said, there are a few burps here and there, uh, but nothing too serious. Uh, it's a beer I could happily drink over and again and I wouldn't feel bloated, I don't think. Um, so I'm going to give that quite a high score, let's give that one an 8 out of 10. And it's been 10 minutes now since I had this lovely beer. I want more, I need more, why aren't they in my fridge? Um, I feel great. I feel lovely. Um, as I say, I could easily have five or six of these sat outside in the sun and I'll be the happiest man alive. So, the Arthur Drink feeling, another high one. I'm going to give it a massive 8.5. We've told up the scores and that means that Dennis Hopper by Mondo Brewing Co. gets a massive 82.1%. It was citrusy with orange lemony flavour, um, nice and light, beautiful tipple, easy to drink. The only thing I let it down a bit was its appearance, um, a bit boring, but drink wise, as an IPA, fantastic. Let's see where that one sits now on our leaderboard. Another beer down then as we continue in our quest to find the best beer in the world. An amazing one, Dennis Hopper. Get yourself a crate of that from Mondo Brewing Co. Definitely worthwhile. 
So, as always, my name is Joe Diver. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you next time on A Court of Ale.